Hey, I'm Monica Neubauer, the Maverick Motivator, and this is video number two in the video series that I'm putting together for first time home buyers or if you haven't bought a home in a while. And I want to talk about the basic financing overview in this video. I mentioned that in my first one that I would tell you, and so this is going to be number two. I am not a lender, so I want you to talk to your lender to get the specifics of this, but I want to give you a basic overview because there are way more programs out there than most people realize. Now, when I meet with a potential buyer, one of the first questions that I will ask them after we get to know each other a little bit and I find out what they're interested in is, will you be paying cash or will you need to be arranging financing? Now, most first-time home buyers will need financing, but as an agent, I've always wanted to respect people and find out exactly where they are with their situation. So we're looking at the lending options here. Now, the, one of the greatest misconceptions that's out there for borrowers is people still think they need to have 20% down to purchase a home. That is so not the truth. Now, you need to be a qualified borrower, so there's going to be a lot of factors that go into that, but you can get loans with, there's a few loans with 100% financing, but there are a lot of loans available with three, three and a half, and 5% down. So get that in your mind first, is that you do not need to have 20% down to buy a house. You can buy a house with, you know, 5% or even less in some situations. So let me go over the options quickly, and I just want to give you these so you have some education when you talk to your lender. The most common form of financing is a loan that we call conventional financing, and that is the general sense of what most people get. The credit score is a little bit higher for this one because it's the often it's a lower interest rate. It's the main one. People can pay 3.5% down, 5%. Um, 10, 20, and why is 20% a significant number? Well, you might need to get private mortgage insurance if your down payment is below 20%, and that will add to your payment. Now, that's something to talk about with your lender. There are options that don't have private mortgage insurance on it, but that will increase your monthly payment, okay? One loan that I've heard of that is interesting and has some benefits for people who don't make as much money in the conventional arena is the Home Possible program. So ask your lender about the Home Possible program, and there is another one that's similar with a different name, so just be aware of that. Okay, so we talked about conventional. Let's talk about a few of the lesser known ones. The next one is the FHA loan, the um, gosh, Federal Housing Association, um, I think that's what it's called, maybe even different, but FHA is the Federal Housing Association's lending program, and that is for people with a lower credit score, okay? Now, it does have some other costs to it, and those will add on and potentially complicate your loan and house purchase a little bit. People who have needed to get one of these, these levels of financing that I'm talking about now in the crazy market had a difficult time. But now that the market is back to a little bit more normal, interest rates are a little higher, we're going to be looking at these loan uh, opportunities again. So if your credit score is a little bit on the low side, you might want to look at an FHA loan. Um, all right, let's keep going. I'm thinking of all, there's so much in each of these. And you can talk them over with your agent as well. I just want you to be aware of them. And the FHA does have some cost to it, extra cost to it. And you're still going to need to have a down payment. They do let you have the opportunity to have uh, closing costs. And that's something to remember is that most of these loans will allow the seller to participate in paying the closing costs. And I use that language on purpose because there will be closing costs for you to purchase the home. Those are costs to the lender for an appraisal. Those are costs for prepaid costs for your house insurance and your taxes that you're paying in advance for your escrow. So there's going to be a number of costs that you're going to need to pay at closing that could equal 2 to 4% of the purchase price of the home. Well, there is opportunity in most, if not all of these structures for the seller to pay those. Now, they're going to, the seller's going to be looking at their net. So if they pay this for you, they're still going to be looking at the total amount that they get. And not all sellers are willing to pay closing costs, but that can be done. 
Okay, the next one is the VA, all right? That's the Veterans Administration Loans. And we want our vets to get the good loan that's a benefit for them to their service. Now, I have a podcast recording that I'll link to in the bio about all what needs to happen there for a vet or an active duty military professional to get that benefit. There are some, some steps to go through that. It's not just a, oh, you know, I'm in the military now, I can get this loan. However, there's a few things with it. One is the um, interest rate is usually a little bit lower, so that's a benefit for our vets. And also it can be a 100% loan. Okay, there is a funding fee on it. So what you owe on top of the loan is a very real number. And you're going to want to understand that before you buy a house. If you are a vet or an active duty military personnel, you're going to want to talk to your lender about that program and see if it would be a good one for you. Okay, the next now, these are all those are your main loans, conventional FHA and VHA. But there's three other loans that I want to talk about just so you're aware of them. One of them is the USDA loan. That's your rural loan. Now the USDA loan, I've never actually done one, but generally they are, can be a hundred percent loan and they are developed to encourage home ownership in the rural parts of our country. So only certain areas qualify for them. Now I have seen that can be a pretty wide range of houses that qualify, but your more developed suburban and urban areas will not qualify for a USDA loan. Okay. So you want to check on that. If you're in a rural area, it also has income limitations on it. So if you are, your income is a little less than what might qualify for some other situations, you might be able to get a USDA loan if you're shopping in an area where they exist. Okay. The next one is, I'm going to call this, because I'm in Tennessee, this is the THDA loan. Now, who are who are those people? The Tennessee Housing Development Agency. And every state has an organization like that at your state level that helps people get in homes. There are actually lots of organizations that help. I'm not digging into all the nuances there, but you can find organizations that will help you with financing and education to get into a home. Now the THDA in our state, there are programs, they're called down payment programs, and they will help pay the down payment for a house. They're effectively contributing to your down payment and there's restrictions that go with that. How long you have to live in the house? Do you have to repay it? So you want to understand what that down payment program is, but it is really helpful for some people. And this also can work with folks with a little bit lower credit score, not, you know, not way low, but a little bit lower. So that is a great organization that helps people get in homes. And again, in the crazy market that we've had, it's not been easy for people to get a THDA loan accepted by the seller. But now doors are going to start opening again for some of these loans and the sellers will be more patient to work with, um, with buyers that have different loan structures. All right. The last one that I'm going to suggest, and this is something that as I'm out there, there's a lot of conversation for affordable housing moving forward. And there's conversation about manufactured homes, um, maybe also called mobile homes, double wides, those kinds of homes are being built, um, the, they're just being built better and better. And I heard from a lady from Freddie Mac recently, and that's a government organization that does financial it's financial backing and everything. And she said, you know, they already have a great structure for financing manufactured housing. And so you need to find a lender who does those loans because not every lender does those loans, but the ones who do are really good at it. Uh, And I would always check with an outside lender before you just take the loan from the seller of the homes. You know, you want to make sure you're getting a good interest rate there. And there are lenders who do them and they are federally backed loans for them. But she said some of those manufactured houses are even appreciating in value. So that might be a good option for you as well. Moving forward, those are more frequently seen in some states than others. Some states don't have a lot of manufactured houses. Some states do have a lot. So just know there's financing financing options for that as well. And all of these are contingent on you having a credit score. So you do need to have a certain credit score. You do need to pay attention to that and some money. 
I'm going to make another video that talks about the money that you need in the transaction as far as down payment, closing costs, other costs that are involved. Um, I do want to close with one organization that I was recently um, introduced to that if you are struggling with your financial education, you just aren't quite sure what's going on, you've got debt, you don't know how to fix it, your credit score is in the 500s or just not good, this organization is called Operation Hope. And it's at operationhope.org. And it's not in every state, but in a lot of states, it's there. And they have lots of financial education opportunities for entrepreneurs and for people who want to improve their credit score. It's no charge to the attendee. So I want to suggest you check that out if you need to work on your credit score. All right, Monica Neubauer, uh, monicanewbauer.com. Thanks for listening and keep watching my series. I'll share some more stuff.